Howdy folks, welcome to another episode of the Rifle Tour Channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about uh, musketry, the art of marksmanship, and where on, shall we say, the, the, the scale or the curve of um, proficiency do you think you will land? And then um, essentially be able to develop you know, a, a plan for success so far as your development of your own personal marksmanship. This is something that I learned a long, long time ago and it has to do with not necessarily just marksmanship, but basically putting together um, a lesson plan that will allow you to migrate from here on the skill level up to, you know, somewhere over here, or maybe even up here. I think one of the first uh, steps that needs to occur <clears throat> prior to... Um, you know, identifying a training regime <clears throat> for yourself as it pertains to marksmanship is to know where you are now. And that's called um, benchmarking. You can be able to benchmark where your proficiency uh, is right now. And then um, be able to identify where you want to be. Now, those are very difficult things to do. Unless you have a... Uh, a regime that allows you to measure it. And so that's one of the key criteria that it, that uh, inspired me to create the Cabin Fever Challenge. Now, I, the Cabin Fever Challenge is a 20-round course of fire, and it requires the shooter to time themselves and to tabulate um, a proficiency score. Uh, and it's all about positional shooting, five rounds standing, five rounds kneeling, five rounds prone, five rounds sitting in that order with a mandatory five round reload in between each position for a total maximum round count of 20 rounds. So it's positional shooting and you're timing yourself. And so the faster you do it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's the balance of speed and accuracy. And you, know, you put your score through a formula and you kind of come up with... Um, uh, your number of hits and you're, you're in, you put your data into the formula and, you, and it spits out uh, a, a score. And so we've been, well I have and, and we have been um, presenting this, uh, this competition since 2014. And we've been keeping, well I've been keeping scores. I have a, a roll of musketry. And I maintain the scores. Uh, and I won't release them yet for this year because uh, we haven't um, we haven't completed our um, awards video yet. But I can talk about uh, the scores in generalities. And so um, you know I populated all of these things into Excel, and I'm I'm able to produce um, uh, a spreadsheet that allows me to crunch numbers and, and kind of look at scores and proficiency through a mathematical perspective using statistics. So I kind of know, um, I'm able to, uh, I will be able to communicate to you in a, in a manner that I think you'll be able to understand as to where um, you might consider milestoning yourself or benchmarking yourself and then setting some goals. So let's get into it. Now, when it comes to numbers and scores, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to develop what are called patterns and trends. And these are performance trends, patterns, trends of performance. And we, we need to know what success looks like before we're able to visualize it in our head. We need to know mathematically what the numbers look like. Uh, now, all of us have go, go to a competition with the assumption is that we're going to shoot a really, really fast course of fire and we're going to we're gonna get little tiny groups and then we're going to get all 20 projectiles hitting the target in the right place and at the right time. But that's not necessarily how it works. There's all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, variables that, that take into consideration as to what your success may look like. Your, your skill, your, your method, your equipment, uh, and all, obviously your practice and, and all that different stuff. But when it comes to, and I'm only going to talk about Division Three, which is manual repeating rifles, such as the, the rifle I have on my shoulder here. It's a bolt action, it's manual repeating rifle. Magazine's empty. And I, I've got this, this rifle here because I want to use it as a, as, a, as a case example of what kind of rifle you might consider. 
if you were to choose only one. <clears throat> um, so the patterns and trends have told us this. If you're going to be a podium shooter, which means that you're going to be, um, you're going to be, how should we say, within a cadre of credible marksmen, you're going to be somewhere in this score zone uh, in order to, to attain or reach or come close to a podium position, which means you've won that division or you're in the top three or four or five kind of shooters for that year. So I've got data going back to 2014 all the way up to 2021 to draw from to give you some performance trends that show you kind of where the top tier shooters are, kind of where the average is, and then down below, which is where we have the developing shooters. And um, creating a, uh, should we say, a community where uh, continuous improvement and the, the improvement of your skills and drills and, and, uh, and so on, it's, it's a safe place to demonstrate where you are on that scale of proficiency. So we have this data, and what does it tell us? The data tells us this, is that um, if you're going to be in a podium position, you need to score, you need to hit the target 16 or 17 times out of 20 across all four positions. So you got, you got three to four misses. If you, if you miss three to four times that target, you're, you're, you're not going to be in a podium position. You, need to, you, can, you can miss three or four times and still be in that area. Uh, so that's an 80% hit, hit threshold. Okay, that's an 80% 80 per, 80 hit ratio across all four, diff, all four positions. You also need to complete it within 100 seconds or less. You need to complete it within 100 seconds or less. And that is a huge barrier for a lot of people. Now, there's a whole reason, there's a whole list of reasons why you might not be able to achieve that. It may have, even if you're the most skilled person in the world, if you're running the wrong rifle, that's going to enable you to be able to arrive in that, you know, at that uh, time milestone, at the 100 second threshold, then it doesn't matter how skilled you are, you're just not going to be fast enough to be in a, in a podium position. Um, so what that really come, kind of boils down to is skills versus equipment. And if your equipment, your equipment is letting you down, then that's something you need to pay attention to. And so um, using a rifle and ammunition co uh, combination that helps to enable you to achieve those thresholds should be also one of the factors or the contributing factors that you're going to think about. And then also definitely it's the skills and drills part so knowing your standing kneeling prone and sitting positions well enough to be able to achieve that 80 percent hit ratio so the the standard of excellence in this match since 2014 has been um an average number of hits so this is for the standard of excellence that this competition has been able to identify okay is that you're hitting the target 12.4 out of 20 uh, out of 20 hits or hitting the target. This is an average for the top 10 scores of all time since 2014. So that's that's a total of seven years of data. So you need to hit the target 12.4 times out of 20. You need to uh, have an average time of 83.9 seconds, and your average score is 59.4. This is for the top 10. Um, this is for the top 10 shooters of all time so far. Those are the thresholds. Now, so that's, that's, a, that's a good target to have to break the 100 second barrier to be able to get, you know, 80% you know, hit ratio. And then, um, so you'll be in a 60 plus, how should we say, score zone. So, but what is the average? The average for this competition is a total of 10.4 out of 20 hits on the target, 141 seconds, and with an average score is 40.5. So that is that is the average out of all of the shooters that have comp competed in this event. Um, and for developing shooters, what the, what the trends indicate, the patterns and trends indicate, is that if you're coming into the competition um, and you're kind of new to shooting, 
is that you're generally going to fall within this performance bracket. Developing shooters, and these are these are people who are um, expressing an interest in developing their marksmanship and becoming more familiar with musketry, and and this is for manual repeating rifles again, is that you're generally going to you're generally going to land 4.7 hits out of 20 rounds. Your time is going to be roughly 176 seconds, and your average score is going to be 14. That's where people that are kind of coming in. So they're kind of benchmarking themselves, right? And then what we do is we, we watch them. And they always start to do this. Because what they're also doing is they're watching the other videos. They're seeing how the other competitors are doing it. And whether it's their position, it's their reloads, the, you know, the, um, the style of which they're able to keep the rifle in the aim. So for example, using the Ticket T3 here. Frequently what you will see some of the beginner shooters doing is that they'll fire their round, lower the rifle, chamber a new round, bring it back up, and shoot that target again. So people that are in the, in the moderate to excellent performance, <clears throat> they don't do that. The rifle stays in the aim, and they manually engage the rifle itself. It's called maintaining an economy of motion. The fewer steps that you need to make in order to, to, in order to complete that course of fire, an economy of motions is a, an economy of time. You're saving time. And so you're developing that, that muscle memory and that proficiency level where you don't need to think about every single step or every single motion that you make. It becomes fluid, okay? So we want to try to encourage people to, to, to develop that skill. <laughs> um, and and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll have been smart enough to put some of the thresholds that I've identified up here on the, uh, on the screen so that you can see it and, um, and help that way. So also, I'm just going to make a note here of this which is since 2014, over the last seven years, is that uh, um, the technology also demonstrates patterns and trends. If you look at it from, let's, let's examine the top 20 scores over the last seven years. What kind of equipment are they using? And you have to ask yourself, why are they choosing to use that equipment? So obviously, the type of rifle that you choose, um, you're choosing that rifle for specific characteristics that make it beneficial to use that rifle design in this kind of a competition, which is demonstrating rapid fire with some semblance of, of precision through four different shooting positions. And here's, here's what the, uh, the numbers tell us so far as the, for the top 20 scores for Division Three manual repeating rifles. These are the rifles that they're using, okay? So 35% um, of the rifles used are Lee Enfields. 35%, seven out of uh, 20 rifles are a Lee Enfield. And those, these are, these are high, high scoring submissions, okay? An additional 35% are push feed sporting arms with uh, generally most of them almost all of them have a detachable box magazine but they're push feeds they're not control round feeding they're push feed sporting rifle hunting rifle varmint rifles but such as the ticket t3 that you see here okay again magazine is empty they have the ability for quick reloads they have a detachable box magazine. These sporting rifles, almost all of them. And they're push feed, they're faster. They take almost no effort to, to manipulate the bulk. One of the reasons, so that's a, that's a total of 70% of the top 20 sh shooting scores are either Lee Enfields or a push, or a push feed modern 
style of bolt action rifle. They're not control round feeding rifles. Those aren't the ones that are winning the matches. They're push feeds and they're fast. So for example, the Tika T3, the Ruger American Ranch. Uh, there's one that's actually a push feed Model 70 Winchester. So as a few examples, 10% um, of the top scoring rifles are control round feeding rifles. I should say actually, sorry, um, let's go back a little bit. 15% of the top scoring rifles are control round feeding Model 98 Mausers. 15% of the top 20 scores are large ring or small ring control round feeding Model Mausers. Okay, Model 98s, Model 96 Swedes, Model 38 Swedes, small ring Mausers, and large ring Model 98 Mausers. 10% um, of them are control round feeding sporting rifles such as the Pre-64 Model 70 Winchester and the CZ 527 which has a det detachable box magazine and incidentally the person that was shooting that rifle was left-handed and I believe they may actually have had the, the all-time high score for I should say uh, fastest speed I'd have to double check that though well, all I'm essentially saying is that shooting a right-handed rifle as a left-handed person, they can do it. Left-handed people can shoot bolt actions just fine, but it's about their... Uh, they've, they've researched it, they've practiced it, they've developed their skill, they've developed their marksmanship, so they can manipulate that rifle even though they're having to reach over and work the action. Left-handed people can do it, and that's a con that's a controlled round feeding. They're not considered to be fast. Well, this one, he, he got it nailed. He nailed it. Um, the, incidentally, also, the, the Model 70 Pre-64 was shot with open sights because it's a 1941 Model 70 Winchester, and it's got a stripper club reloading bridge built into the receiver. So that's, a, that's kind of a, a different consideration. He's not manually reloading it. He's using a stripper club to... Uh, to, to hasten his reloads. And very last of the 20 top scoring rifles in all time for this match, one of them was a K31, and that comes down to 5% because they're, uh, they're, they're just super fast. They're just super fast. Super fast rifles. But here's the, the key thing 70% of the winning scores are Leon Fields and are push feed sporting rifles so that that tells you something okay so if you're running a conventional k98k with open sights and and so on is that um, the trends the patterns and trends <clears throat> demonstrate it's unlikely that if you're shooting that rifle you're going to be within that cadre they're somewhat rare uh, not saying that they can't they can't do it because obviously we have uh, three Mausers in the last seven years that have actually been in uh, podium shooters, so it is possible. Anyhow, just to reiterate, is that depending on where you are on that developmental curve, okay, is that what the what the competition allows you to do is to observe the winning circle see what they're doing, try to emulate or integrate what you see them doing, integrate that into your system, integrate that into your skills and drills, into your practice sessions, your own developmental opportunities, and the equipment that they're using. Maybe you should consider adopting some of that. And it may mean having to sell something in order to acquire something and, and then you know invest in that system. You're, you're, you're investing in a system and you're investing in yourself. Anyhow, um, those are the general trends and patterns that I have observed for Division Three. Uh, I was going to try to integrate this into the awards video, but it's just a, such a big subject as I wouldn't have time to do all of that. So uh, I'll just make this its own kind of standalone, its own standalone um, uh, video. I will say though, is it on? on the score matrix that we've developed over the last seven years, I would not consider any of the shooters to be um, elite, elite shooters. 
And the reason for that is because there are some elite shooters out there that, I mean, they're, they're just going to get 20 out of 20, and they're going to do it fast. And those scores, you know, I try to achieve that every single time that I shoot it. But so far, my, my best hit ratio is, and I'm, I'm one of the top podium shooters for Division Three, and this is the best that I can do. And it's with this particular rifle, okay? The Tikka T3 CTR in 308. Here we go. So my best performance in all 14 years in this division is 17 hits, 95 seconds. Remember that 100 second threshold, 100 seconds or less. Okay, you need to be in that threshold. 17 hits, 95 seconds for a high score of 89.5. That is the best I've ever done. And that was also shot, that was in 2019. It was shot, it was minus 15 degrees Celsius. It was in the snow. You know, we shoveled an, an area out, but you're still shooting on snow and on top of cardboard. You're shooting on top of cardboard, you're doing, so I mean, it's winter, you're wearing winter gear, it's cold. It's not the best shooting conditions. That's the best I can do in those conditions, right? And that's with a this this particular rifle with it's with a different stock, mind you, but with a similar kind of scope. The scope I was shooting for that one it was a one to four by twenty Leopold uh, one inch tube. You know, it's maximum four power with the duplex reticle. Nothing fancy, okay? Nothing fancy at all. And but that's that's part of my equipment. That's part of how I've developed myself. I said, I don't have a huge scope on here. No, 4 to 12 or 4 to 12 by 50 with a big objective. And it's, it's big and it's bulky. I want this to be a rifle that I can use for reasonable accuracy, precision at 1 to 200 meters. I'm going to be just fine. Okay, I'm not, I'm not shooting, you know, tiny little, little, little groups off a bench. That's not the intention of this rifle. So that's how I've, I've developed my particular marksmanship. It's kind of to be based around, in the future it will be, around this kind of rifle. Anyhow, that's it, folks. That's it. Benchmark yourself and then watch um, how these other folks are shooting their rifles, what kind of rifles they're shooting, what kind of practices marksmanship practices they've they've developed and try to maybe emulate what they do hope you guys are doing great cheers as always maple leaf up